But this is really a beautiful view of the kibbutz. You see how green it is? None of what you see here that's green was obviously here before those founders arrived. It's a really, really beautiful. The houses and the trees and the greenery. Hello everyone, my name is Benji Gruber. We're here at Kibbutz Yotvata. Geographically speaking, we are in the southern part of Israel. In 1957, Ben Gurion sends or puts together a group that comes down here. To buy anything they need, they need to travel nine hours on a non-air conditioned bus all the way to Tel Aviv to purchase anything they need. We're talking about August, 45 degrees in the shade, 47 degrees in the sun, no air conditioning. At that point, no swimming pool yet and it's very, very hard to do everything. And then comes up an idea of we will grow cows here. The idea of bringing cows here, Dutch cows by the way from Holland, was to use these cows for self-consumption, having milk products for the people here in, those, in the late 50s, early 60s. All the experts said to these young 18-year-olds, a Dutch cow will not survive in this desert. If it survives, it won't give milk. If it gives milk, it won't give enough milk. Lo and behold, that was wrong. We are in the land of milk and honey. As the Bible says, Eretz, Zavat, Chalav, Udvash, the land that flows with milk and honey, we flow with milk. We send out every day from our factory hundreds and thousands of liters of Yotvata milk. 2022, we are known for our milk, for our chocolate milk, and it's really all about pioneering and about creating something from pretty much nothing. We have the real big deal of Yotvata as far as agriculture, which is our dates, our date trees. And I'll move a little bit over so we can see the date trees, the tamar, when I said before that this is the land of milk and honey, the biblical honey is not honey from bees, it's rather honey from dates. And this is Eretz Zavat Chalav Udvash, the land that flows with milk and honey, our milk and our honey from these trees. We have hundreds of them in this whole area. We are not the only ones that grow dates, but we were the first ones who did it in this area. The other kibbutzim came and learned from us. It depends on the water underground. It depends on the level of salt in the water. Do these, do these trees need irrigation? What type of irrigation do they need? We're situated where we have one side of us is Egypt, the other side is Jordan, countries that we are at peace with. We live here at peace, we want peace. We get together with our neighbors in Jordan. We exchange ideas in agriculture and in, and in other things. And this is a wonderful, a uh, place to live and uh, to enjoy. Anything that you see that's green was probably not originally here. So there are people whose job is to make sure that it stays green all the time. We can see to my left, it's still a desert. To my right, it's green. So in order for the desert to bloom, in order for us to be able to live in the desert, you need water, you need hard work. We see the building with the blue rooftop. That's the factory. That's where every single day, um, hundreds and thousands of chocolate milk and different types of milk and different types of drinks and cream and other things are manufactured and sent all over the country. And that's really what Yotvata is mostly known for around the country. Well, thanks for being with us today. I think we learned a lot about a kibbutz, about pioneering, about the desert, about the wonderful, beautiful land of milk and honey. And we hope to see you here soon. Please join us in the land of promise. Thank you.